lesson is actually part two of a two-part video lesson on uh, topics from the year two IB economics syllabus, the section on international trade. Today we're doing a video on the Marshall Learning Condition and the J-curve. And you should have already watched the video introducing the Marshall Learner Condition before you watch this video because this is just part two of that video lesson. So in this lesson we're going to talk about a theory, a concept known as the J-curve. This applies to the effect that a depreciation of a nation's currency will have on that nation's current account balance in its balance of payments over the period of time following the nation's currency's depreciation. So if you recall from our previous lesson, we talked about the Marshall Learner Condition, which is basically a concept that says that if the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports from a nation is greater than one, in other words, if demand for exports and imports is elastic, then a depreciation of the nation's currency will lead to an improvement in the current account balance. On the other hand, if the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports is less than one, then a depreciation of the nation's currency will worsen the current account balance. The logic behind this, of course, was that if export demand is relatively elastic, then a weaker currency will lead to a proportionally larger increase in exports to the rest of the world, since foreign consumers are highly responsive to the lower prices of that country's exports due to the weaker currency. Likewise, if import demand is elastic, then a slightly weaker currency will lead to a proportionally larger decrease in the quantity demanded of imports. Therefore, if PED is greater than 1 for exports and imports, then a weaker currency will actually improve a nation's current account balance. Now we're going to apply the concepts of the short run and the long run to the Marshall Learner Condition and explain how it's possible that due to the relative inelastic demand for exports and imports in the short run, a weaker currency might actually worsen the country's current account balance in the period of time immediately following the depreciation. On the other hand, over time, a weaker currency could lead to an improvement in the current account balance due to the increasing price elasticity of demand for exports and imports over a longer period of time. So let's look at our graph over on the right here. This graph is eventually going to be our J-curve diagram, and we'll explain where the J comes from throughout this lesson. So let's take a country, for example, the United States, which currently has a current account deficit of a couple hundred billion dollars. So on our axis here, we're going to label the United States with a current account deficit of negative $200 billion. And let's assume that we start at the date of 2011 and we see that along our horizontal axis which is time at 2011 the current account balance in the United States is negative 200 now this is just a hypothetical situation these aren't real numbers and uh, we just want to see now what would happen following a depreciation of the US dollar to the United States current account balance over time so let's assume that a few things happen here let's assume that the exchange rate of the dollar worsens or gets weaker against other currencies. A weaker dollar will have a few effects. One of them is that exports will increase from the United States and US imports will decrease. However, whether or not this improves the current account balance depends on the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports. And one thing we've learned many times throughout the economics course is that in the short run, price elasticity of demand tends to be inelastic or less than one. This, of course, is because consumers need time to adjust their behavior. If a good becomes more expensive in the short run, consumers probably will continue to consume that good as long as it's what they're used to consuming. Therefore, in the United States, if the dollar gets weaker, imported goods in the short run will probably continue to be consumed at nearly the same rate they have been before the dollar got weaker. For example, if Americans have been importing cars from Germany and the dollar gets weaker, the price of those cars will go up. But Americans like German cars and they need time to find a suitable substitute for German cars. Therefore, in the short run, they will probably continue to consume a similar quantity of German cars than they did before the depreciation of the dollar. Price elasticity of demand for exports and imports is relatively inelastic in the short run, or it is less than 1. If this is the case, then the change in exchange rate in the short run 
will actually lead to a deficit in the U.S. current account. Because Americans will continue consuming foreign goods in nearly the same quantities that they did before the dollar got weaker, and because foreign consumers will need time to notice the now cheaper exports from the United States, both of these two effects will combine to move the United States current account further into deficit. Although their exports are cheaper, foreigners just aren't going to buy many more of their exports in the short run. And although imports are now more expensive, Americans aren't, just aren't going to buy much fewer imports in the short run. Therefore, it's possible that a depreciation of the dollar will actually lead to a worsening of the U.S. current account deficit in the short run. Now, over time, we know that consumers of all goods become more responsive to changes in the price of those goods. So as time goes by, perhaps over the span of months or maybe even a year or so, American consumers will start to notice that foreign goods are becoming more and more expensive. Therefore, they will start to substitute foreign goods for domestically produced goods. Or we'd expect this decline in the nation's current account to level out over time. And eventually, once foreign consumers become more responsive to the cheaper exports from the United States, American exports will start to rise at a proportionally greater rate than the currency was depreciated. Over time, the U.S. current account should start to move towards surplus. So the rationale here is that in the long run, exports will increase and imports will decrease. But if the PED or the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports is greater than one, then this will lead to a surplus in the U.S. current account. So our assumption here is that the dollar has remained weak. The dollar, if it does remain weak in the short run, will actually worsen the current account deficit since consumers abroad and at home are highly unresponsive to the weaker dollar and the cheaper price of U.S. goods. But over time, price elasticity of demand increases and therefore the U.S. current account will start moving towards surplus. Now, will a weaker currency definitely move the current account balance into the surplus range? Not necessarily. And in fact, as we've learned in the course, over time, an increase in demand for U.S. goods will cause the exchange rate to appreciate again. And as the dollar grows stronger, it's likely that the opposite effect will occur and the U.S. current account balance will move back towards deficit for the same reason that we noticed it moved towards surplus following a depreciation. However, the reason we call this graph the J-curve is that it shows how a nation's current account balance is likely to change over time following an, a depreciation or a weakening of the country's exchange rate. At first, demand for exports and imports is inelastic, but eventually consumers at home and abroad become responsive to the weaker U.S. dollar and demand for exports and imports becomes elastic. Therefore, the nation's current account will start to move towards surplus, but only after a period of time over which consumers have had time to respond to the now cheaper U.S. goods and the now more expensive foreign goods. So there's your J curve. It's called a J for an obvious reason. It is shaped like a J. The vertical axis is simply the nation's current account balance with a positive range above zero and a negative range below zero. The horizontal axis is simply the time following a currency depreciation. In the short run, we see a weaker currency will move a country's current account towards deficit since consumers are not very responsive to the now cheaper goods from that country and the more expensive goods from abroad. But in the long run, we see a weaker currency should begin to move a country's current account towards surplus. That concludes the lesson on the Marshall Learner Condition and the J-Curve. This is the higher level section of the IB Economics International Trade.